Hello LT Gamers and welcome back to the channel in 2024. Today we've got something special, we're going to dive into the Horn of the Abyss mod for Heroes 3 as we explore the long anticipated 1.7 update. That's right, the 1.7 update has finally dropped and it's brought something we've all been eagerly awaiting in this scene. And that's the introduction of the Factory Town. So why all the buzz about this new town? Well, it's a game changer. It's injecting a fresh dose of strategy into Heroes 3. So we're going to unravel the significance of this new town and how it's going to shake up the very foundations of gameplay, including the multiplayer scene in Horn of the Abyss. Before we dive in though, don't forget to show your support by hitting that like button if you're as hyped about this update as I am. If you've got any thoughts or questions, drop them in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you guys. And of course, make sure if you haven't already to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. Now let's dive in guys. Now let's delve into the heart of the matter, the factory town. In version 1.7 of Horn of the Abyss, the factory town emerges as a neutral alignment town that is native to the wasteland terrain. It offers a unique blend of nature and technology. The town is home to the mercenary and artificer hero, adding a fascinating twist to your strategic choices. Now I can already hear people bemoaning that it doesn't fit the fantasy vibe, but this is actually from the unreleased Forge Town that was supposed to be part of the original game, and is actually compliant with the lore of Heroes and Might and Magic, which is surprisingly sci-fi and tech based, so check that out if you don't know about it. The factory armies stand out by seamlessly combining the forces of nature with cutting edge technology. Picture this, you've got humans wielding guns, flamethrowers, marching alongside creatures enhanced by technological marvels. It's quite a spectacle. And where does the factory town call home? It is the native train of the wasteland, as I said before, and it's a fitting backdrop to this fusion of nature and industry, and this almost desolate feel to the faction. But what really sets the factory town apart from its counterparts is that its units do pack a serious punch. We have two level 7 creatures in the factory town, and it demonstrates a definite slant in my experiences so far to the end game, making it a very formidable force in the latter stages. However, this strength comes at a price. Balancing the factory town's economy poses a lot of challenges, and I've really uh, struggled with the strains on resources, particularly gold and crystal, in my games on hard, harder difficulty levels. So it's a delicate dance between technological advancement and resource management that adds a new layer of complexity to your Heroes 3 experience. Now let's take a closer look at the intricate machinery that powers the factory town from unique structures to the formidable units. So at the heart of this we have these several distinct structures that set this faction apart. First on the list is the bank, so this is a special structure that allows commanders to secure a 2500 gold loan. However, at the cost of decreasing your gold income from that town by 500 for the next five days. So this could be great for getting a quick start and that sort of thing. Next up is the mana generator, which is a unique structure enhancing the mystical capabilities. So it provides the garrisoned hero with additional 20 spell points during any siege defense. We have artifact merchants, which are self-explanatory and part of other factions as well. And then we have a very interesting feature, which is the airship. This one allows your heroes to soar above land, water and obstacles and is a game changer for quick and strategic movement. It can carry one hero and their army at a time. This is the one that I could think could be slightly uh, a game breaker if, if people learn to use this correctly. So I'll revisit whether <laughs> how this one develops over time. At the heart of any faction is of course the units. So let's dive in and have a look there. At the foundation of the factory's mites are the level 1 creatures, halflings, and their upgrade, halfling grenadiers. They get a bonus to luck and also are able to ignore defense. They are a ranged unit, so they accompany gremlins as being the only, or master gremlins rather, as being the only level 1 unit available to factions through their town that is ranged. Next we have level 2, which are mechanics and engineers. They have a breath weapon with two squares covered in their attack and are able to repair mechanical units. So some interesting synergy there. Next we have your classic slow, sturdy, tough unit, which is armadillos and bellwether armadillos. And then on the level 4, we have automatons and sentinel and automatons. They have some, they're mechanical and they have a self-destruct ability when they die. Haven't really unlocked this, how to use this effectively yet. 
Level 5 is one of my favourite units, which is the Sandworms and the Olgoi Korkos. Well, I don't know how I'm saying that, if that's correct or not. But they are basically like worms that can go subterranean and dive up and strike at your enemies. The interesting thing with the upgrade is they can eat corpses for additional attacks, which is extremely powerful. The level 6 unit is a range one and it's Gunslinger, Gunslingers and Bounty Hunters. They are fairly standard, but they do have a cool ability, which is they fire back before they get hit. So uh, it's very useful with the Bounty Hunters. They have unlimited fire back. So when they're getting hit by ranged units, they're actually going to return fire first. Very useful. Then we have the two level sevens. We have the Cotodils. Don't know if I'm saying that correctly either. And their upgrade, the Crimson Cotodils. And then Dreadnoughts and Juggernauts. The Cotodils have an extremely powerful ability, Meditation, that allows them to become invulnerable. The upgrade means they don't skip a turn. The, the base counterpart does mean they skip a turn to use this ability. And then the Dreadnoughts and Juggernauts have a Cone Firing ability, which is also extremely powerful. So those are the units of a very powerful roster, I believe. And I'd of course be remiss if I didn't talk about the heroes that make up this faction. So we have two hero types, that is the Versatile Mercenary, who is the Might Hero, and the Ingenious Artificer class, which is the Magic Hero. They all have a range of unique strengths and strategies, and I'm yet to truly work out what the best uh, approach is, but I really am synergizing well with the Mercenary Heroes in this class so far. But the adventure doesn't end there. Horn of the Abyss 1.7 also unveils the Forged in Fire campaign. This is dedicated entirely to the Factory faction. So brace yourselves for an epic journey through challenging maps with increased difficulty, which will really put your strategic prowess to the ultimate test. And for those who want to craft their own heroic sagas, the update introduces the campaign editor that allows you to unleash your creativity, design custom campaigns, complete with the new background and region maps that are breathing life into this update. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to appreciate the incredible musical score that accompanies this faction and is composed by the talented and fantastic Paul Romero, and a familiar name to Heroes 3 enthusiasts as he was part of the original score for Heroes 3. So it not only resonates with nostalgia, but adds a new layer of grandeur to the Factory Town experience. So what can I say about this update overall? I gotta confess I'm head over heels for this update. The Factory Town breathes new life into the classic Heroes 3 gameplay, offering a fresh and exciting perspective. However, that as with anything, there are usually challenges and balances that need to be made. One element, for example, that I can see and I've experienced myself would be the hero Dury. He starts with offense and armor as starting skills and, to be honest, can snowball and single-handedly win you a game. So I, I think things like this will be balanced as the game uh, update progresses. As I wrap up, I, I can just express my sheer joy as a Heroes 3 fan to witness the game evolving, thriving and leading the pack even after 24 years since its initial release. The dedication of the modding community coupled with the timeless magic of this game ensures that the legacy continues. That's it from me today guys, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe if you share the love for Heroes 3 and the Horn of the Abyss mod. Share your thoughts on the Factory Town and version 1.7 below. Until next time, may your battles be epic, your adventures legendary, and your love for Heroes 3 everlasting. My name is Tom, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye now.